the diddler may have diddled for the last time. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I guess got, we clap we, it up for that. We Get got this him. Nigga up out of here. Anything I say is really on me. But I wouldn't get you like... I would never expose you. Miles is said, always looking for a gotcha. Yeah. I would never get you. Like, what if I said, I think Diddy is like a good guy? Like, then... <sighs> like, what would I do <laughs> as, as an editor take. with that... F- oh, as, a, as your hot take? Yeah. What if I said that? If you said that That'd as your hot, hot take, take, then I might... <laughs> I wouldn't leave it in because I want us to be a successful company one day, but <laughs> I would spend 10 minutes refuting you. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't believe that. That's, take that's, that's, that's false. You think that started there? No, he's a he's a bad person. Take would be red hot. He's I a th- bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a crazy name for the company. <laughs> bad boy. I kind of like it. Nah, but like it, just knowing what happened now, oh, <laughs> like yeah, you can't yeah, call no, yourself bad boy yeah, and be a freak ass nigga, bro. Yeah, <laughs> that's problematic. This is a good, terrible yeah. guy. Did we yeah. decide if we're gonna do hot takes at the beginning or end? No, we didn't. I think we should decide that. I think Ose was the one who was like, nah. But you guys are in favor? I'm either or. I just I just threw it out there into the ecosystem He's to see what we were going to say. See, it makes sense. On like, logis- like logically, logically, it seems like a good idea. You know what? We- in my heart of hearts, do I want to do it? No. Oh, then no. Listen, we're not doing it. We're, okay. not, we're not going to do that. We're not doing that. Does this company run off my heart of hearts? Well, I think we have two people who don't want to do it. And yeah. I think I'm indifferent. Okay, cool. Spencer said, so am I the decision maker now? <laughs> Do I have more power than I thought I did? Yo, yo, yo. What up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Stereo Vision Podcast. What's good? Episode 97 coming at you. What's going on, man? Good. I'm in the intro now. Good yeah, intro. Yeah. Good yeah, intro. Good. I'm trying to speak up this year a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just just trying to get my voice out there a little bit more. You feel so. like you don't talk enough? Uh, I talk when necessary. Okay. Speak when spoken to or just like No, no, no. Not Something speak when spoken to. No. No, I speak when necessary. Like when, when necessary. my when I know that my opinion or what I say can have an impact. That's when I like to speak. Okay. Opinions have the most impact when you know who's saying them. Uh my name is Spencer. Miles. Oh say. Thanks wow. for thanks for tuning in this week. I, I feel so weird saying my own name. Does that like not feel weird to you? No, it feels weird. I like my name. Do you think you have a fitting name? Yeah. I'm trying to think of another name for you. What if your name was like Jacob? What, does he look like he could be a Jacob? You kind of look like an Orlando. Orlando, <laughs> yo, <insane>. I'm saying, <laughs> yo, Orlando's. I insane. could see me being a Jacob, but that's just like too regular. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. I want a name with a little sauce. Spencer's fitting. Ose is pretty fitting for you. Too. I think so too. Yeah, yeah, I like Miles. Miles more like say something crazy. More like feet. <laughs> I heard that. I, I hate that joke. That's one of the worst jokes. Having to grow up and hear that all the time is, is miles terrible. more like half mile. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, back on the mics, man. Last week it was just the two of us. Yeah, that was weird. Ose was outside doing some crazy shit, doing some big shit, putting out albums, having parties and shit. How you been living, dog? Man, you see me? Did you miss us? <laughs> I did miss y'all, man. Shout out, shout out to y'all, bro. I uh, I actually did miss LA for the first time ever. Like I was like, cause I was at home, and like sometimes home just gets a little slow. You know what I mean? Like there's not as much shit to do. Uh, nobody really wants to pop out like that. LA, someone's always down to have a good time. So obviously, I had my party on Saturday. Shout out everybody that helped with Ultraviolet. Shout out Radio. You know what I'm saying? But. I don't know. I, I like miss the action and the, the constant, you know, motion of LA a little bit. So nah, it's been it's been a nice little little regular week in LA. I feel like we're really getting into the swing of the year. I didn't do shit this week really crazy. <laughs> I had an unremarkable week. Super unremarkable. But you know, I watched a lot of content. Saw a lot of basketball, <laughs> you know. Yeah, hoops are going crazy. crazy. The hoops is going stupid, bro. We <laughs> watched so much basketball yesterday, it was insane. It's peak college basketball, peak NBA basketball. You know that's always that's always a good time. We had a we had a sports talk last week for like the first ten minutes of the pod. Oh yeah, it really did feel like <laughs> the old school shit, bro. We could get into these tangents about that, but appreciate everyone who watches. Appreciate everyone who tapped into the Cowboy Carter reaction live streams. Make sure to look at the link in the description, man. Um, yeah, should we get into some of the music that came out? Should we start with Cowboy Carter? Yeah, I mean, new album from Beyonce, country album of the year, second deviation album in the Renaissance era, album of the year, album, album of the year. year. I, I think that I, I feel comfortable 
saying that, even if it's not my favorite of the year at the end, I think it's going to be hard to put out a body of work quality wise that beats this. Yeah, I agree. And I haven't really gotten time. Obviously, it's Saturday. Yesterday, I was either editing our reaction or sleeping. (laughs) Um, so I haven't really gotten the time to live with the music, but I know like when editing those clips, especially like Bodyguard, I'm like, oh, I'm really excited to play this song. Yeah. You know what I mean? It yeah. sounds like 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 my favorite song that I could hear on the radio ever. You know what I mean? It, like a lot of it sounds very radio ready and very like it's going to be a hit, but like I also really like it, which is a good balance to strike. Yeah. I love how she like went into this country theme um, without compromising her sound or even just like, you know the story that she's telling and putting out there. I mean, I think uh, Levi Jeans for me is a standout with Post Malone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even like Sweet Honey Buckin like with Shibuzi, like that record is insane too. And there's a lot of like dance influence records as well. Like kind of like some shouts and points to Renaissance. Uh, yeah, this, this project is super dope. I need more time with it for sure. Because I don't even know what my favorites are. There's so many different songs you mentioned yeah. sweet honey and bucking and that feels like it might be the best song on there yeah just the, sure. the three different parts i think my favorite section is honey in the middle mm-hmm. but then it ends so strong with like the pharrell assisted bucking which is one of the most fun moments on the record yeah it's really really hard to even quantify how great beyonce is yeah. i definitely love dance beyonce i feel like for the last two years we've gotten a lot of elements of that in her music and that's really really fun because I think it's always been very dressed up, traditional, either R&B or pop, you know what I mean? Very clean production, that type of thing. So when she does some off-the-wall stuff or something different, it's really, really exciting, and her voice is just... its uh, is, is she one of the best voices ever? Um. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Spencer don't believe that. No, I do. <laughs> her, Adele, Whitney, Whitney, Amy Winehouse, Amy, Amy Winehouse, Aretha, um, Mariah Carey's up there. Oh, definitely Mariah. Is Ariana Grande up there? Uh, no. Vocal talent. Not, no. not music. I'm talking vocal talent. Vocal ability. Sheesh. No, I don't want her there. Sheesh. Are you serious? Let's take a step back. Yeah, I don't want her there. Let's take a step back. Why? Based off what? Based off her voice. You can't just be, have an incredible voice. You also need the records to support I'm it. I'm saying, but the conversation... Is, Niggas I know what the conversation niggas is. Niggas don't listen. I know bro. what the conversation is. I'm not saying as an artist she's with all those people. I'm purely just saying vocal talent. And I'm purely saying no. But based <laughs> off nothing. <laughs> just based off the fact that her name is Ariana Grande. Not that's at hate. all. That's hate. Not that's at hate. all. But regardless, regardless. What about like uh like Dolly Parton? Is that one of the best voices of all time? <laughs> oh, are you trying to prove your point? No, no, I'm not trying to prove any point. No, he's just saying wrong things. I'm just thinking um, we didn't we don't really ever I mean, she's definitely one of that has some of the most name recognition and is probably the biggest female in country western history. And you know, we're talking about nah, my, bad, my, bad, my, bad, my 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 bad. Um, but yeah, I think that we're all gonna definitely be playing that. Do you think it's gonna get played outside? Yeah, really? Yep, yeah, I'm, for I'm sure. interested. I don't know how. I think it's Beyonce, so it's gonna get played, but I'm interested to see the settings. That I'm gonna hear a lot of this in radio for sure. No, one of my friends, uh, he he DJs uh, back in Virginia, and he played Yaya at a bar, and they went crazy. Okay, okay. but I think we already talked about that. I was like, I don't know if it was that song specifically, but I was like, with one of those like later half songs, I was like, this is perfect bar music. It was Yaya. Yeah, you said that exactly. when we were reacting to it. You're like, this is gonna have the bars go crazy. Yeah, because it just reminded me back in like college, like the type of music they would play there. They play like a bunch of like. Country music, more. What would what would you consider Yaya? Yeah, yeah. I, I it feels like a classic rock record to me, like a '60s like rock record. Like it was a lot of like country, a lot of like rock folk, and then they would play "Erase Me" by Kid Cudi once in a while. I love that song. And they, that that's what the rotation would be. <laughs> yeah. And then they played "Sicko Mode." They love that song. What? They love that song. They, they love that song. Sicko um, Mode. <laughs> is Sicko Mode like the easiest, like most translatable record across everyone? Like, I feel like people of all ages just fucking love that song. <laughs> I don't know, man. I hate Sicko Mode. <laughs> I can't play that song. Yeah, I can't. I cannot I can't play either. Sicko Mode out. But the first time you heard it, did you like it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. For sure. But then when they started, you know, doing the Mobamba sicko mode rotation. Bro, <laughs> like, the fact that nightmares. people still hit that, just hit that little nightmares, run. Nightmares, nightmares. <laughs> still sweeping across the Midwest. <laughs> um, Man, we were at Rolling Loud and oh, they did it. They did it. They, they went sicko mode, Mobamba, Finito, I think. Wow, that's. 
Old school, man. That's going to be our old school jams. Bro, it's crazy. <laughs> um, okay, I also want to say, do you think the higher-ups are communicating? Because Beyonce seems to always be on point with the trends that are happening in music. And it's really crazy because I, I assume these bodies of work are already well thought out and finished. Yet last year, around the time when her and Drake are about to drop, everyone's talking like, oh, dance is going to take over this year. She has a product that fits that perfectly. All year we've been talking about how country's about to take over. She has a product that's going <laughs> to, you know what I mean, serve that need. Her preparation is just crazy. Her team just seems to always know the right move to make. And I'm like, how? how is that even possible? No, you hit it on the head. That's Illuminati. <laughs> uh, yeah that's illuminati they, they, they said 2024 is going to be the year country all the major you know conglomerate owners streaming service owners all came together and said okay it's country's time we're going to push that it's going to be everywhere and then they went and got beyonce and you know, beyonce's they manager paid her. and jay-z and they said hey just so you know 2024 is going to be the year of the country this is probably like two years ago you know what i mean so she made a country album and now it's going to go number one and <laughs> at gonna, the illuminati meeting yeah, they're gonna oh they're gonna go crazy. They're gonna do a little dance to this at the Illuminati meeting. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even that mad at that take just because like both her albums are so timely, bro. Yeah, so timely. It's crazy to think about. It is really crazy. I don't know. I, I mean, you can kind of see like things moving in a certain f- direction. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, they threw up the Whoa. hearts. Bro. Oh, Yo, oh, my no. oh my god! They threw up the hearts for the Illuminati. No, bro. I'm kind of fucking scared about when these emotes come and where they're coming from. <laughs> Because we're not streaming. We're just recording. Right. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. That was really scary. Wait, let me see if it happens again. That would have been oh, crazy. Yeah. Oh! oh! <laughs> Yo! Yo, and it just freezes it. Oh, God. No, nah, that's crazy. <laughs> not going to lie. OBS. OBS. Oh, my God. I'm not going to lie. That was scary as fuck. Bro, if anyone knows what's going on, we're just in OBS recording this. Please let it model. You do it. I mean, I guess if you throw I'm up certain hand signs, <laughs> no, hey, they're not going to get me. If you throw what up certain hand signs, like, I guess it responds to it. <laughs> that, those five minutes are going to be a bitch there. <laughs> I'm cutting all that out. No, oh, you got to leave that in, bro. That's really interesting. Uh, that's really funny. They're going to be at our doorstep in a week, man. <laughs> do you believe in that? You think, the, do you think the Illuminati is real? Let's put it on wax right now. I don't think that people's idea of the Illuminati is real, but I do think that, obviously, bro, you see it in every power structure, bro. There's people at the top that really control where money moves and where resources moves and like that controls like culture. Mm-hmm. I think that exists, but I don't think they consider themselves the Illuminati. I think they just are super rich and can just move culture because they have money. Okay. The Illuminati 100% exists. <laughs> and it's not like what we think it is where they go and they wear funny hats in their meetings and they sacrifice children and then they make people do like shame rituals. That's not the Illuminati. The Illuminati is literally just the most powerful people that own BlackRock, which owns all of the companies. You know, it's literally whenever all the most powerful people in the world link up and chat. You know what I mean? It doesn't even need to be like malicious, like malicious. It doesn't need to have malicious intent, but just them talking, they're going to get like strategy from the other people and kind of understand what the other people are thinking and they're going to, it's going to be in their best interest to all move together. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't have malicious intent, but it just gives super villain vibes. Yeah. It <laughs> like is. Bill Gates and like Steve Jobs in a room or not Steve Jobs. What's the, what's the nigga's name? Microsoft, Mark Zuckerberg. Like all that money in one room just feels nefarious. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like they're going to be doing some weird shit. But think about it. Whatever Zuck wants to do affects million billions of billions people, of people billions and billions like, of people. you know what i'm saying that's already illuminati behavior and ah. it's like he's not even top you know what i mean yeah, it's like yeah. black rock and the other company from did you guys watch that documentary no. when it was like uh oh i forget the name of it the companies that own facebook the, the, the company that owns basically everything you yeah. know what i mean uh, we're back to conspiracy pod <laughs> like, you know what i mean conspiracy that's not a conspiracy man. That's not a conspiracy. You can look up BlackRock and they own like probably like 70% of like corporations. I'll Google that right now. In America. Oh God. I mean, well, fuck. Should we jump around? Be, uh, should, we, should we just get to the get to the shit? Because we could do more in music, but if we're already here. Well, take us take us all the way. Uh, boy. <laughs> Whoa. Um, okay. So speaking about weird niggas in high up places, I guess. <laughs> we'll be back to music in a second. <laughs> The diddler may have diddled for the last time. Yeah. I, yeah. I <laughs> we guess got, we clap we, it up for that. We Getting got this him. Nigga up out of here. Yeah. Um, stop. <laughs> no, <laughs> stop, it, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. No. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. God it's insane. No. 
it's no insane more. that that happens. No more. Uh, yo, it, you see that? Vi- Sorry, go, go ahead, go ahead. We'll get into it. <laughs> my, my fault. I stopped it. We got to start back up. My fault. <laughs> Diddy was just caught by the government. It seems like. Yeah. I think there's been lawsuits. There's been speculation. There's been a multitude of. Trust me, bro, so sources, as Ose likes to say, that have been talking about this situation. But the government finally seems to have gotten involved and stepped in and said, Diddy, you cannot be running around these streets causing mayhem anymore. Yep. Uh, they, they, they got him as soon as he got off his jet, right? Well, so apparently what happens is as a result of all these court documents that have been brought against Diddy for sexual abuse, child trafficking, all these terrible, awful, 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 awful things. Bad guy by all reports. Um, yeah, he uh, he's trying to flee the country basically and go to a place with no extradition. I might be saying that right, but basically a place where he can't get arrested. He's trying to go hang out with Russell Simmons. Yeah, and basically fucking- do the same thing that that nasty man did. Go yeah. to the place where all nasty men stay. Yeah. Um, yeah and they're retreating Bali. And they caught him. Yeah. He had to ground his plane and then came back to Florida yeah. after. So, and then now he's still free. There's videos of him walking around right now. Like smiling and shit, right? He yeah. looks a little too happy. It's uh, it's weird. And basically they raid his house looking for laptops, phones, just to find emails, proof of all this. And then I think specifically blackmail tapes and videos um, that he had of other people. Oh, yeah. I saw that he had every room in his house or wherever he would throw the parties camera so that he could like get like catch the weird freaky shit going on and like blackmail people, even though he was the one probably instigating and like yeah. running ringmaster for all the weird freaky shit. It's it's a nasty situation, man. It's obviously prayers up to anyone who was affected by these terrible actions, all that stuff. Like it's it's dangerous that we've let someone like this have so much power, so much influence in the industry. The jokes have been pretty funny a little bit, but um, yeah, it's just it's just a weird situation to see someone get taken down and their image literally do a complete, not a complete 180 or 360, you know, because I feel like people have kind of known that he's suspect for a little bit of time now. Yeah. But now it's just all out in the open. Did you see the one dude that rolled by his house when they were raiding it? Mm-hmm. It's just like in like an old Bentley. He's just like, yo, man, like. They got like a school bus of like forty children every night pulling up here. Yeah, whoa. Nah, just like a, it's like a random dude, bro. You like it, like the report said like like man that claims to be Diddy's neighbor <laughs> <laughs> says school bus of children arrive every night at one a.m. It's like that man definitely just just drove by and wanted to troll, but yeah, just threw that out. There. Yeah, <laughs> and I love fifty and all the stuff that he's been saying around this because for years he's just been like, yo, this man is weird. Like, this is, like, the worst guy ever. He is not not the one you want to be around, and he's kind of been proven right. But who was... Didn't 50 have, um, like, connections to a woman that was brought as a sex worker in the court documents? And used to he, be like, his used to be his girl. Okay. And what, Damn near might even want to... I want to say might be his baby mama. I think he's a baby mama, because I yeah. think he took on legal action when it came out that yeah. she was in the documents and, like, applied for, like, full custody or something. Yeah. Yeah. Don't quote me. I don't know if that's all true, but that, I think that I saw that on a trust me bro source. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a weird situation. I don't know. He's definitely finished. Like you can't you can't work with him. He's sold all his shares in Revolt TV. He's not it seems like a mogul, alleged mogul has kind of been taken down and removed. I wonder if he's gonna get removed from like all of like music history. Or you think this is gonna be like a cautionary tale? It's really interesting because you can't tell you can't tell the story of hip hop without some of these like people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the story doesn't make sense without Russell Simmons. Yeah. Def Jam doesn't exist. Hip hop doesn't take off without Russell Simmons. You can't yeah. tell the story without Diddy. To be honest, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it is, it is interesting to see how these legacies are affected, because I don't think it's right to just wipe them from history. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I definitely think there should be kind of this negative connotation whenever you speak about these people. Like we shouldn't be glorifying them, but. I do think it's important for people to understand the history of the business and of the industry. So I do think it's important that these people, you know, are read about still. I mean, why can't both be read read about side by side? You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like there's probably so many instances and so many more stories that we haven't heard about. Like, you know what I'm saying? People like Diddy that have, you know, while they're like achieving all these things and becoming CEOs and, and signing artists, like... There's always like a negative side to it or like a darker side to it. I think these things should just be told side by side. 
You're right. That that's what's important. Whenever you speak about these stories, tell the stories, but make sure to not omit like the terrible things that happened. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it just it's important that this is out because I think it really lets young artists know, young entertainers know that everything that you think is going on and this is not roses. Yeah. All money is not good money. You don't want to be taking pictures with everyone. You don't want to be doing the handshakes and taking bread from everyone. You really have to be specific about the company that you keep because that's your name. And all you have at the end of the day is your name, your reputation. And if you're known as an associate of this type of person, that's going to fuck some shit up for you. Yeah, I think that's a big takeaway, and I think that's probably a positive. Yeah, you know what I mean. People, Definitely. you know, people need to be careful who, who they hang out around. I think the Cat Williams shit is true. Like all year, you know, the facades are getting cleared up. Everything that we thought was operating in a clean way or like maybe is good is not as it seems. Yeah. and I think that's important. You know what I mean? Because none of this shit is as perfect or fun as we even thought it was when we got involved in it. You know? Yeah. Working on the back end, and so I think we really get to see a lot of the bullshit. The pillars are falling. Yeah. Something something big is something big is already started and is shifting and changing. I'm interested in how it affects everything kind of below it. You know what I mean? Like when the foundation that all this is built on is more shaky than you thought, it does make you kind of nervous for how things are going to things are going to be affected at the consumer level, you know? Yeah. How is this type of stuff going to affect the music? What if you find out stuff about, you know what I mean? I don't know. You, you, you never know. I mean, I think we're already kind of seeing it. I think that there is like a, a and this doesn't really completely connect to the Diddy thing. I, I think when you see uh, artists being attacked for lyrics and like, you know, Rico Case is coming out and you see like maybe people that we, now I won't say me personally, but like people that are revered in the culture, like also, you know, having things revealed about them. I feel like there's a general distaste for hip-hop right now and i think that people are taking advantage of that and moving forward with these actions i feel like hip-hop is going to go through a crazy restructuring in the next like few years i feel like we are probably going to stem more into world music because of it and then maybe come back to it but i don't know i, I saw the schoolboy q interview with on on a safe place pod he even said it. it's like bro the shit is cooked right now yeah i think it's bigger than hip-hop though i do think music as a whole is kind of tumbling you know what I mean? Like, I think we're seeing, we're, we're, we're done with the old industry. We're like, oh, they were, you know, being sexual predators and creepy and children. You know, old industry's out. But the new industry's also out. You see so much pushback against streaming right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You see James Blake's comments turning into James Blake's new platform. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really interesting to see what we're going to do, if there's going to be enough motion to kind of kill streaming. Yeah. I, I, just have, I, I think what James Blake is doing is dope. It's interesting to me that like I don't so you can pick the price of the demos you sell on his platform, right? I believe so. I haven't looked into it too. It you know just what I'm conveniently saying? came out after a statement. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, it does feel a little bit. Well, that's fine. I mean, mar- marketing marketing's a tool. Marketing you know what I mean? If marketing, tool. if you're marketing something good that's beneficial for everyone, I don't think it's wrong to. Here's to what here's well. what really realistically needs to happen in music in order to like even this stuff out. And this goes back to my gatekeeping comment before. Realistically, we need to go back to a time when not everybody can just upload to whatever platform there is, right? There either needs to be some kind of like, you have to pay to like put your music up on these services or it needs to be a little bit more exclusive to, to I don't know, like, I hate to say it, but real artists, bro. Yeah. Like, I think you can't, you you really shouldn't just be allowed to make a song. Like, I shouldn't be allowed to just record a mic, record a song on this mic, and then upload it to Spotify. Yeah. Why can we sit down and make a podcast and upload it to YouTube? Well, the podcast shit isn't cooked. I'm t- We're talking about music right now. But I'm saying it's the same thing. Like, you can't put those type of restrictions on people and creativity. Well, but I, it's, I'm, devaluing, I'm saying, it's devaluing, like, better creatives. But we can't. I, th- I understand what you're saying. And there does need to be some sort of barrier to entry. I just feel like it would be more effective on the label side and what they're big enough, what they're putting money behind as opposed to limiting the creatives. But I mean, where I- does the label get the money to pay the artists what they earn if the streaming service isn't paying out enough artist royalties to make it make sense? Right. Like, all I mean, I mean, the, it's not like the labels are getting all this money from the streaming services and then yeah. holding out on the artists from that. But I'm, you know what I mean? Like the problem is the um, the price that we're paying for music. I, I feel you. My problem is this. 
I think that too. Well, I'm talking about the oversaturation problem. I think that the problem of too many people coming in and getting bigged up and shit feeling very temporary, microwavable in music is on the label side because they're the ones putting marketing behind bullshit. We need to be more selective with what we're pushing to the top. And then when the product is better, you could argue for better wages. No, I, I disagree, bro. I disagree. Me, I, I think that I understand what you're saying, but I think realistically, and we saw this in 2020, I think it's short form platforms that have become the issue because realistically all the microwavable stuff that you're talking about is coming because like people think that sounds on TikTok are funny and then they're like using them and pushing them. And then that song that tr that translates to streaming behavior and people are streaming the song. But and that's all, what's going to happen inevitably. But all I'm saying is we just need a higher barrier to entry. There used to be CDs and vinyl and all that stuff. And then streaming took that away. And I remember before that there was a huge 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 war between like these like like the napsters and like uh i used to use something in like a uh, middle school called groove shark and like even soundcloud where it was like there was a huge battle between the industry and these platforms and now they're trying to embrace them but it's it's to the detriment of art but you're not going to get rid of those those things are never going anywhere that barrier of entry that you're talking about i feel you it's never going to exist again with internet culture and all the advancements we've had in technology so what we can effectively change is the type of talent we're signing out of this we can't pay attention to all the bullshit that's getting uploaded you can't big up all the shit that's just coming out and having a viral moment for a second i think we've seen that shift a little bit already in the industry but we're talking about two different problems because you're talking about the quality of music, and I'm yes. talking about the money that an artist can make and yeah. the price of music. Yeah. And that's different different problems. But I don't think every artist deserves to be getting paid a lot. Like I, think I don't either. The, I think that the Spotify streaming rate for some random nigga who has like 100 songs that are all kind of mid on Spotify is probably fair. I mean, what we really need, what we really, really need is new technology that can make um, copyrights a lot more effective. You know what I mean? We got to be able to protect protect digital intellectual property because then what can happen is all the real artists can come together and say, okay, we're all going to start selling music again. Yeah. Music now costs $10 an album and we're selling it independently because there are all these independent distributors that we can use. All the bullshit can live on Spotify and SoundCloud. People can keep, you know, if you want to pay $10 a month and have as much music as you want, you're getting probably mid to bottom tier music, but yes. that's okay because that's what you're paying for. You know what I mean? And people can upload there and still gain traction there. But if you want that top shelf of music, if you want James Blake's next album, you know, all the heavy hitters, like you you, you should have to pay for that. Right? Okay. I fuck with that, right? Yeah. Because that is the problem that like we're going to get into, obviously, like nerd talk or whatever, but like it's like an economic issue. Yeah. Because someone like a James Blake, Justin Timberlake, those type of people that are maybe more higher i don't want to even say higher quality but it's just a different tier of music getting a different type of listener right that probably has a little bit more money they should be able to charge that higher rate to their fan base because they know that they'll pay it and that's how they're going to be able to even out when they may not traditionally stream as much as someone who's super hot right now yeah does that kind of make sense yeah but the only thing is that doesn't work unless everyone agrees yes and all the artists do yes. it together cause, yes because nobody's gonna like if, if they, they're like, okay, fuck it. I'm not going to buy that. I'm just going to go listen to this. You know what I mean? But if we can get all of this music, you know what I mean? All the highest quality, most established artists to start selling their music again, then we make progress. But rock with me, right? So uh, now I'm thinking about actionable change, right? Yeah. And what we could actually do. Because realistically, I still don't think there's any way that you're going to be able to get everyone to agree with that. Everyone to kind of get an industry standard rate, that type of thing. So I think the live music aspect and the importance of that coming back is going to be what really creates this change. Because one, that's already how artists are really making money. You know what I mean? If you're touring, if you're doing that live stuff that's putting brand in your pocket. Two, that's where you can have that more scalable type of pricing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can really see the difference in who's going to pay $200, $300 for a floor seat at Beyonce versus Baby Kia like we were just talking about or one of these other underground niggas. A floor seat's going to be like five, ten bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. A smaller venue. Yeah. And that's where you, it kind of evens out the way it should. And those artists who are smaller still have the opportunity to one day charge 300 for a seat you know what i mean but the only way they're going to get up there is increasing their quality of music increasing their like maybe output in certain cases things like that i don't know i think live is going to be a big solution to this you're right but then i bring in your your problem which is quality of music being recorded because yeah. now the bottom funnel the goal the the product is a live show 
and the music you're putting out on streaming services is a marketing promotional tool to get people to come to the live show. Yeah. And I'm not saying there's a huge problem with that. Like the like Dead and Company, one, I of, think my, one of my favorite be. groups is that way. Yeah. Uh, you look at all the music they put out, it's all live shows. They don't record albums. Yeah. You know what I mean? They just the live show is the event. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, but I do think that there's something about selling really good albums that yeah. might get lost in that mix. You know what How? I mean? How? I feel like a good album would translate to a good live show. You're right. It, it definitely, yeah, no, that, that's a good point. You know, I'm, I really think that the more increased importance we put on that, we're going to see a big change. And it's going to be the, like the real people who want to work are going to be on tour. Touring is hard. Yeah. Putting on a good show is hard. Thinking of good visuals, dancing, doing all that, paying people, all that. Like, that's a hassle. And I think that real people who take themselves seriously as artists are going to put in that work. And the ones who don't may fall by the wayside as we continue to go in the streaming journey. Yeah. I don't know if I'm completely, like, understand what you said. But I do think artists should be able to charge whatever they want for their music. Yeah. That, I think, if, if anything, that's what I took from your point. That's the main that's the main thing. That's the main thing. But how do we even get? How do we? I thought we were talking about Diddy a second ago. How do we get here? I don't want to talk about that man anymore. We were talking Freakonomics. <laughs> Freakonomics is wild. Um, okay, what else happened? I guess let's get um, let's get back into any new music that dropped. Did anything else come out that we want to talk about before we get into some other shit? Um, we didn't talk about the Tyler. Al no, we did talk about the Tyler album. No, we didn't. I you think, and me made. Yeah, I think we did. I think we it. did on t on the last one. Oh, say you like any of those songs? If I speak, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> I mean, I I think the Tyler album is good. Um, I do think like I think ART is a standout. I think number one with Thames is is a good song too. Fire. I my only thing is, and I think this is just like kind of like my opinion on like the whole like her music in general is that it is way more like pop leaning than I would prefer. So I don't really think I really, I don't think I would have enjoyed it regardless, but I don't know. I don't, I felt like they were, I felt like the songs were kind of cookie cutter at some points. Really boring. You didn't like jump. Nah. Right. This nigga's over here talking to me. Like I that like song jump. is crazy. Well, I didn't say it was crazy. I said, I like it and I would love to hear it like in a club. I just thought it was funny that like, Something was weird to me about her putting on the, the island Caribbean accent. Yep. I don't know what it was, because like, a lot of artists can get away with it, but when I heard her do it, I was like, uh, it just sounds weird. She's got a... I mean, and she's young, too. How old is she? Like, 21 or something like that? I think it's like 22. 21, 22, whatever. Um, she's got to grow up a lot, you know what I mean? I think she's going to get better, but I think she does have all the elements that make a successful artist. And I think that this was not... This was far from a bad first project you know, the branding the marketing yeah like, the album she's cover developing. is fire like i i think yeah i think you know there the music needs to keep improving but it's a good first project especially after like such a crazy smash viral hit yeah you know? yeah um camille cabello dropped and you saw that on stream i love it that shit was that's that's one of the craziest songs and videos and I don't mean that in like a positive way. <laughs> that was one of the craziest songs and videos I've seen in a long time. No, it was just too freaky for me. That was wild. I don't even know if I got freaky. It was just like trying hard to be like a indie movie <laughs> type. I don't even know. Like just like it was trying so hard to be different. No, but when Sp what Spencer said was right. It was like playing on the idea of like pain. Like she's in like a car accident. She's like. I don't know wrestling some some other person. Like <laughs> yeah, it, it just it. it and I think the song title I love it plays in I don't know it just gave me weird Camila you fucking vibes you hedonistic bitch <laughs> you <laughs> crazy whoa, whoa. wait but how do we feel about Cardi are uh, we letting him get that off the more I listen to his verse the more I like it I love it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I like Cardi I'm a Cardi fan but I think he is it's a gimmick it, the, you you like to talk <laughs> about gimmicks you hate gimmicks the all black <laughs> kind of, he has a thing and he's getting it off and it gets his fans excited, but I don't know if it's that, that crazy anymore. I wish he would have worn a different outfit for that video. Cause I was like, bro, you look like you've worn the same thing like five times in a row. Like for this new era of what, what you're doing. And like, did you see like the, I like, I love the future album, you know what I mean? But is, I think it might've been the, what's the song with him? Oh, um, type shit. When he's wearing the mask. The type the shit video. Like, I don't even think that's Cardi, bro. 
The, I hate the masks. That video well. looks crazy, bro. Yeah, <laughs> they're just standing around. Like I wish people did like that. You seen the edits when people like take the music out and just like <laughs> have the video of them moving yeah. around with the shoe squeaks and shit. It's like, yo, I think that that definitely felt run and gun to me. Yeah, I like how run and gun is like the new industry term for lazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're gonna shoot a run and gun video real quick. We just need a couple thousand dollars for it. It's like, yo, uh, to, to get your homie paid. Like, what, what is we doing? You know bro? what is wild though uh, is that a videographer can pick up. Can like shoot a music video for like two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. I could shoot a music video for, <laughs> for less. <laughs> for hit, hit me up. I got a VHS. No, nah, but you know, hey, we we watching people get paid. You know what I mean? I hope it's going in the right people's pockets and everything. But that was um, I think that's everything for music. Then really, I mean, we're not gonna get any new Lizzo music anytime. Wait, soon. you actually didn't like that Cardi verse though? No, I did not like that Cardi. I didn't like it in the moment. I like it more now. It's it, he didn't say. Like what do you you can't hear him? When does Cardi say anything? But that's that exactly. That was <laughs> egregious. Like the flow wasn't even interesting. Like I think I've heard him do that exact same flow like three times now. It's th- yeah. I, How about I, I, don't, 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 I think he's just he's <laughs> literally just bringing his you know? uh, his style and his new sound to a different audience. I I respect it, bro. This man probably recorded that shit in fifteen minutes and is getting a crazy bag. He's getting a bag, but like. What is the bag, bro? <laughs> what, what is this bag that everyone, you know what I mean? You're getting it like, like okay. And? Miles, you could have recorded that verse. I, I agree with you. That's you why could. I'm not saying I'm I respect gonna, it. And I think you're mad that you didn't get the bag. I'm not <laughs> mad at all I didn't get the bag. I like Cardi. Like It's like this, right? Imagine when you defend someone mm-hmm. and like you're like, oh, you should listen to this. This is cool. Like, da, 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 da. And then someone is like, this your man's? This is what I'm supposed to be moved by. This is what has you jumping around. I look crazy. And I'm like, I can't defend this. You know what I mean? I, That's a good point. Kind of how like you were describing to me about the concrete shit. Mm-hmm. Or, is it, or is it the new Caribou song? The new Caribou song. Yeah. Yeah. That is an objectively bad song. I don't care. I'll get on, I'll get on wax and say that. And it sucks when you really do like defend someone. You know what I mean? Like I was definitely in the office with Marvin five days out the week telling him Caribou is better than Anicia. You know what I mean? I mean, you. So you had a, it, there was a snippet though, and you liked the snippet when it had first dropped. Right? I didn't like the snippet. Is that the new song? I haven't listened to the new song yet. Yeah, this, it's that I, snippet. I really like the snippet. It, yeah, it, the song is like, it's just it's there's she's another one with components. I get it. Like I get yeah. how this could work a lot. It just sounds too nonchalant on this, and the mix doesn't sound it. good to me. I gotta listen to it. Um, but yeah, the new concrete song grew on me though. I do like that a little bit more after listening to it a couple of times. Um, Camo had a really, really good verse on that. I thought you didn't like Camo. Yeah, I thought you hated Camo. I don't hate Camo. In the context of our argument is when... What was our um, argument? That like someone was better than Camo? Or no, Camo was no, better than someone? Yeah. Four yeah. Bats. No, yeah, we're, talk, we're arguing about uh, four I don't, bats. I'm, we're not like, talking about yeah, four bats right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, re- I, I, ref- I refuse. No I more refuse. four bats. No, no, well, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want to be wrong again. Whatever, though. I mean, we can get into it, though. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to talk about this man, but we can get into it. I hope I didn't just. No, okay, you're good. We're good, we're good. Nah, we're moving on. Yeah, yeah. I don't like how you say yeah, bro. Do you want to get into it or do you, what? what? You mean? I'm not you're here like, to be confrontational. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm right. not here to be confrontational. I'm just here to you know. You know what? I'll be the mature one. We're not going to talk about four bats today. Yeah, I don't. I, would, I don't want to. Yeah, talk I don't about want that. to. I definitely don't want to. Please. Um. Do first week sales matter? Yeah. Why? They matter because, I mean, if you're trying to, like, make money and sell records, like, they matter. Uh, if you're asking, like, do they matter in the long run? No. I mean, they're a building process. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really say anything just then. <laughs> let, me, let me backtrack and say it. <laughs> Good I, think, I think first week sales matter. I don't think they matter as much as, like, hip-hop fans try and make them. Why matter. you make? Don't, don't do hip-hop. It's not hip hop fans. You hip hopper. It's not you, only you, you hip hopper. I think everyone. <laughs> I think everyone. Voice. I think everyone talks about. No, it. I don't. I don't think they're they're not talked about in pop music as much. We just saw Beyonce's first week projections. I bet when Post Malone drops, I see those everywhere. That I think people talk about. That. I think first week sales are important, but not to compare artist versus artist, but rather to compare um, industry versus industry you know what i mean like it's important to see the state of the industry when you're seeing the titans and what they're doing first week you know what i mean like it was really interesting on a safe place when they were getting into all of wayne's first week numbers you know what i mean and nobody nobody is selling over a million albums first what week does it mean? in in rap today nobody not kanye west 
teaming up with fucking Drake on a new album and selling a million units. You know, I, so I think that speaks to the industry and it is important. Why does it matter though? Because like, I think seeing, I get you that it's like important to have benchmarks and just see the current state of where things are at. You know what I mean? Big picture, zooming out. But that's something to be discussed damn near in like boardrooms. I don't get why it matters to fans at all. I mean, yeah, I mean, it matters to us, I think, because we care about this shit. And I think that's a benchmark for the fact that records aren't moving like they used to. And when you add that with the new payment model, you know, it tells us that there needs to be restructured. I think that lends itself to the conversation we had earlier when we know that artists are getting paid less per album sale and, and album sales crazy. are like cut in half. You know what I mean? It just it just tells us a little bit about the economic state of the industry. I mean, also, I think that makes sense though because I feel like we all kind of can tell that we're in a more singles-based time than an album time. So it makes sense that overall album sales aren't the same because who the fuck is listening to full albums besides like us really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think people are checking for that. I just say that because I don't think it should matter to artists. And you see how when you chase first week numbers nine times out of ten, you're going to end up with a product that's not going to do crazy first week numbers. I think the only people who could do that are like masterful artists. Like the two examples I can think of is like a Doja Cat and like a Summer when they both decide I'm going to make a traditional album that's going to move units or a traditional song it normally always works for them but for the most part if you're aiming for commercial success i feel like it doesn't work out and q kind of attested to that yeah i mean i think if we're looking at music as an art it doesn't matter and it shouldn't matter but i mean you like to talk about rap as a sport you know what i mean mm -hmm. and in a sport you need benchmarks you need irrefutable numbers mm -hmm. that can be hit or cannot be hit yes you know what i mean so yes. if you're looking at it like a sport then, yeah, you need first week sales because you need to know how a thing performed. Or even mm -hmm. as a business, not even as a sport. I like to look at music through an artistic lens. So to me, it doesn't really matter as much, personally. But I, I can understand why it does. No, that was uh, that was actually a good point. Because there, there does have to be a clear winner. Do there doesn't have to be. And it, maybe it, that's it, a toxic it, mindset for, that we have. You know, no, There doesn't no, have to be a winner. It's the lens you look at it through. Yeah. If, if uh, From a business and sport point of view, yes, there has to be a winner. Mm -hmm. If you want to just look at it as art, no, there shouldn't be a winner. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's dope to see the ones who could combine both. You know what I mean? Those are, and I think those are what makes the goats, you know? We just got, we just got a great Beyonce album that's going to do first week numbers. I guess we can also kind of talk about who are those people who have kind of married that perfectly. And I think are those who you consider the greatest artists ever. The ones that do commercial success, big numbers, and the art is still it's like great for us. So you're asking who the best artists of all time are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you start with Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think probably. I think I yeah. I'm I'm not saying at the top of the list, but I'm saying when we're having the conversation, you gotta knock out the gimmies. You know, which is Michael Jackson. You have to talk about Mike, you have to talk about Beyonce, you have to talk about Taylor, you have to talk about Stevie Wonder. Stevie, I think you need to talk about Prince. I think yeah. you need to talk about the Beatles. Yes, Beatles. I don't know. I forgot that. Um, I think you might need to talk about the Beach Boys if you're talking about the Beatles. Nah, I think they're too old. The Be they're the same era as the Beatles. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And that pet, music pet just sounds, sounds too old. That well, music sounds too well, old. You don't like surfing USA? Nah. <laughs> but Surfing no. USA is not even what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Pet Sounds, which is their best album, which directly influenced the White Album, which is the Beatles' best album. So I think you, you I mean, we don't need to include the Beach Boys. I'm not, I'm not, like, I'm not like a big Beach Boys fan. We don't need to do that. Because um, I think of it just the ones that like are no dispute. I think you need to talk about Miles Davis. Okay. Because, you know, anyone that the first jazz album they always buy, you know, and that's, you know, yeah. kind of blue. Yeah, but I don't know if it, that, I think that's what I'm trying to get at with that. Like, Yes, Miles Davis, legend, all that. But there's just so many people who I know have not and will not get the music. Whereas I think like with Michael Jackson, there's barely... I don't know anyone who I couldn't find one Michael Jackson song they like. You know what I mean? I think I think it's just like it's different. Quality-wise, artistic-wise, influence-wise, yes. But that's why I do think coming off like the sales conversation, when you add in those aspects, those benchmarks, it's hard for someone like that to compete with Mike. I bet you Kind of Blue is like four times Diamond. Yeah. I, that's one album. I, Mike did that shit how many times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel you. We don't have to. Mike did that shit how many we times? We don't have to include yeah, I'm named Miles after Davis that nigga. Either. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to hate on my brother. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That's twin for real. 
Um, are there any modern day people that could be in this conversation? Do we include producers? Pharrell? That's the yeah, I was going to say Pharrell. I think Pharrell and Kanye are the only two like producers you could include in that. Yeah, because I think they make their own music too. Yeah. Um, yeah, hip hop needs representatives. It's, it's at the point where it does, and I, I give them Kanye, Hove. We could put Jay Z in there. Maybe Wayne. Maybe <laughs> I know that pains you. I know that hurts. No, but... I mean realistically, if we're talking about uh, you know even like sales and you know business acumen and all that, he's got it. So those are the only two that I really think I'm putting in there. You don't think you can put Drake in there? No, not yet. Not well, yet. shit, I don't know. Maybe. Well, I mean he's definitely doing the numbers, but I think we have to wait a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at just that. a little bit of time. I just forget how old he is. He's old. You know, like he's been doing it for a while. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of albums. I think he I, I personally would not put him very high up in the conversation, but I'd definitely put him in the conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. With the, I think he could be mentioned amongst those people. I think he might be the only cause it's hard. Uh, maybe Kendrick. Mm. I think give him time and I'll put I I will I'll put Kendrick and Drake both in. I it. think it depends on um I think Kendrick will release at least two more bodies of work and it kind of depends on like how those go. Yeah. Cuz he's released I feel like I w- I would still put Mr. Morale in the classics conversation. I think it it rounds out his catalog pretty well. Uh, this is that might be a hot take, but yeah, I don't that's think a hot it, take. I don't think I, I don't think, I don't think bro, I don't think it's as bad as everybody tried to say. It's not bad. It's not. Um definitely not. But I do think for some reason I'm hesitant to put Kendrick there and I think it's cuz he's not as consistent when it comes to releasing music. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I yeah, yeah. I don't know if I put Kendrick up there. I don't know if I put Kendrick up there. I think it's an album away maybe. Yeah. Maybe I mean, I think and I away. think also just 5 years away. I think his albums are enough. Um what about like, I mean, we put Stevie in there. Can you put like a Marvin Gaye in there? How many projects does he have? How many projects does he have? That story is so sad. And he just, you know, we lost one. He, his dad shot him, bro. <laughs> Marvin Gaye. Let's see how many albums he has. Uh, yeah, this is, we're, we're full nerd talk, by the way, this episode. I, I appreciate it. Okay, he has a lot of music. Damn, 61. Look at how niggas look. Would you have that haircut? <laughs> I would. Damn. I'd rock that today. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, no, I think you could put him up there. Okay. I think you could put him up what there. What about Adele? I want Adele to be included in this conversation really bad. I you love Adele. for white women. You love Adele. I'm saying love a white woman. <laughs> Settle, Settle down. down. Adele's in that. I'll put it. I'll, put, I'll give it to Adele. How many albums does she have? Three? She has three, I think. She's so funny. What is Adele's personality? Yeah, British. I don't know. <laughs> British. Yeah, we know we got to be careful talking about them. Um, she has 19. Wow, that's really funny. She just does. She really does the whole age thing. 19, 21, 25, 30. <laughs> Why she do that? I don't know. There that, literally time. I don't know if I like stamps. that. Time stamps. Um. Yeah, she's got it. You can put Adele in there. Who is she? What is she? What is she doing? I, you know, I. She's a singer. Cause, uh, cause Sade is is from over there too. Yeah. I don't know if I like their music like that. Okay. They're little singers. You don't, you don't, you don't have pre- to. That's a preference. Yeah. Fuck them. Sade, can that's we put can saying. we put Sade in there? No, you can put Sade in. There. No. Greatest artist ever. It might be a reach. That, yeah, that's... It yeah, might be a reach. It's a little bit of reach. I know so we're sorry. missing. I'm so sorry. Did we talk let about me, Whitney Houston already? We, we didn't. didn't. We talked about her in talent. But you guys don't want to... I don't want to put her in the greatest artist of all time. I, you can definitely put her in the greatest voices of all time. I'm not mad at artists. An icon. I'm really not mad at artists. She's crazy. Let me see all the albums. She got a lot of albums. 85 niggas was on she was on some let me not i mean you can have it i'm not gonna be mad at it i feel like people just don't talk about her projects like that it's more songs with her yeah but yeah i don't know I don't um know. elvis <laughs> elvis oh god why don't, <laughs> what made you give that reaction to elvis 
He just gives me the ick, man. <laughs> Why does Elvis give you the ick? I think it's understandable. I don't like his hair. I, don't like I feel like Elvis doesn't deserve to give people the ick. U- ultimate. <laughs> by the way, we talk about ghost riding. Come on now. <laughs> ghost riding. Come on now, bro. Yeah, I mean, isn't he like pretty widely known as like the biggest like thief of black music ever? Yeah. So do we want to put Chuck Berry there instead? <laughs> anyways, anyways, our young our young audience is gonna love this conversation. Um, I love this conversation. I, I don't think we're done. <laughs> Who else you want to name? Radiohead. I don't know enough. If yeah, you if same. you want to talk about niche, like I think Radiohead's in the conversation. Really, I think that's like the thing we're not. They, those about. are the guys that do. <laughs> I think we're definitely they, not talking. They did creep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They have like they've spanned like fifteen <laughs> yeah, years. I mean, if if you're like in indie rock, like that is like the indie rock band. You know what I mean? Yeah, fair. I just don't think you guys are in that world. Like the depressed, like white man world. Like Radiohead is like the soundtrack to that. I, I hate Radiohead now. Why? You don't like depressed white men? I feel like you'd like depressed white men more than you know, non- happy non- white men. Happy <laughs> white men. <laughs> like at least they're hurting. I saw Umar. <laughs> he'd have to hurt too. Um, I bet Umar likes Adele. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. Definitely, definitely for sure. Does. For sure. Because I feel like Adele's like, really like, she don't even try to be with none of the bullshit. She's like, always in character. The only one time she slipped up was when she wore that. She wore some crazy shit. I think it, it was like a Jamaican holiday or something. We haven't named yet. <laughs> <laughs> with the Bantu nuts. Oh, God. Wait, you you guys never saw that picture? I no. see this picture. Before we wrap this up, you, we got to talk about... Sir Elton John, he needs to be in the conversation. Whatever. Paul McCartney needs Don't to be care. in the conversation. Don't care. David Bowie needs to be in the conversation. Don't care. And Freddie Mercury of Queen needs to be in the conversation. I'll say, what's your hot take for the week? I feel like I already said this. I want to argue, but I'll, I'll say it again. And <clears throat> we can start it here. <laughs> Despite everything going on with Drake, Drake has the best artist roster out right now. And it's it's a little bit confusing because they're not really just hip hop. There's a lot of R&B, but he is the best, most curated art, artist roster out right now. Have we said that before? Yeah, we did that. And there there is like a label. There is like a clip waiting, but we can do it again. Let's do it again. You haven't done it as a hot take. Let's do it again. I mean, they just need they just need to be active. If he has the best artist roster, he needs to be the best artist label head too. You know what I mean? And, and help them develop and drop music. No, That's fine. But I, I, yo, out of yeah, the big, th- they out of the big three, though, I feel like especially he has the best artist roster. I feel like he. I feel like only him and Cole have artist rosters. Yeah, Kendrick don't. He has Baby Keem and that other guy. Tana That's Leon. not a roster, you know. Who the fuck is Tana Leone? <laughs> yeah, he's Tana Leone's. No, no hate, no hate. But like, OVO sound is better than Dreamville. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm saying. Like, who's really the artist ran labels besides those two? YSL. Okay. Well, let's st- let's say. PF. Give me run run me through OVO OVO sounds roster. We have. I'm gonna start with this one. Now me share it. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis on that. We Why? have party next door. <laughs> Roy Woods, Majid Jordan, Division, Smiley. <laughs> I think that's it. Say it. I think that's it. Say what? who you're forgetting. Who am I forgetting? Yeah. Oh, you're forgetting someone big. Who? Like like the most prominent right now. Who's flying? What is the flappy flappy? I mean, Drake just did a remix with him. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The the talk of the town, four bats. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I agree. I definitely agree. I don't really think there's any competition right now for that. I can't even think of any other really artist ran labels. Yeah, no, it, it, he's got it. Yeah, he's got it. He's and got it's it. settled. Dreamville. I'll say put his take in the microwave. Cause, boss. <laughs> Cause, boss. <Schloss. laughs> it's cause and boss. I mean, it's J.I.D. and Ari Lennox are good. They yeah. are, they and are Earth good. Gang is also really good. They are really sure. good. It's just a different, it's just a very specific, I think it's a very specific lane that Dreamville occupies. Yeah. And in you hate game. that lane. Me? Mm-hmm. I hate you that You think lane. it's corny? You both do. I really like Jid. I feel like I've been like a Jid advocate. I think you I think- like Jid and I like Ari as and well. And I think I listen to Ari. What? 
I, I think don't you listen both, to Earth Gang, but I like them. If if like a if like a if like a guy like came to our house wearing like a Dreamville hat, I feel like you guys will both like exit. Now, Dreamville fans is different than the Dreamville musicians. So I'm right. I don't like Dreamville fans. If I got a Dreamville shirt, would you still let me on the podcast? I wouldn't let you wear it on the podcast. <laughs> you know what? I do. I I would go to Dreamville Fest though. I would. I would. One hundred percent. So what are we talking about? Miles? Something. Something in a different. Because like, you know exactly what I mean. I've been referencing. I watched a lot of Schoolboy Q interviews last night, but he said something that was very interesting to me. He's dope, huh? He's dope. I I really like you as a person. He, he was something. He said something very interesting to me. Obviously, this is about TDE, but he was like, "Yo, people think we have no hoes, but like." There's actually a lot of women at the shows. It's just like a different type. Like it's like artsy. Like you might find like a wife there. <laughs> and I was like, you know, Dreamville kind of gives me like similar vibes. Less cool, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like Dreamville Fest, you could probably find that type of person there. I'd <laughs> rather go to Jack Harlow's festival. Oh my God. To find a woman. Ew. What? The women at Jack Harlow's festival? Ew, bro. Nah. But it's nah. on the river. Nah, nah, that just screams dirty Air Force Ones, bro. Jack Harlow's oh, festival? but so does yes. Dreamville. So does Dreamville. Bro. So does Dreamville. So does Dreamville for sure. Oh, you're forgetting the, the Dreamville roster. for sure. You're forgetting how far this all three. Jack of, I'm not gonna lie. All who, three who, of those. Wait, who's, those who's, who's there besides SZA? Huh? Who's there besides SZA? We did this on camera already. We Amore, all Ray, Tim's, Caribou. Oh, God, Caribou. Bro. You are such an advocate. You switch up so much. I switch up when they don't deliver. She didn't deliver a very good song. Jack but Harlow, and SZA, she, she James looks, Blake. She's making me look kind of bad. James Blake, Omar Apollo, Pink Panthers, Vince Staples, Amare, Channel Trez, Majid Jordan, Slum Village, V's, Dahi, Jordan Ward, Raven, Linne, Rich Homie Kwan, Benny X, James Savage, Caribou, Malcolm Todd. Elite lineup. I think and lot. it's on the river. Well, I think and you, it's on well, the river. You've lost the essence of the conversation of what he was saying, though. He was saying the rank in the places, it seems like, by which one you could find a wife at the most. Oh. And if we're going between a TDE festival, a Dreamville festival, and Jack Harlow's festival, I'd probably go... Hmm. That's, TDE or I'd probably go TDE, no disrespect, at the bottom. Oh. For a wife? To find to like stumble upon a woman that you would want to want to be with, yeah. At the concert, I think TDE Dreamville Jack Harlow. No way, not TDE, quality. TDE on top. I need a hoe with some taste. <laughs> no, you can't say it like. Why <laughs> I need a hoe with like some taste? Why you bro? said it like that? No, no. I feel like just you're TDE. gonna be okay getting in the car every time, and your girl's just slapping J Cole every single time. Oh God. That sounds like the worst thing ever. Yeah. I feel like someone who would do that might be open to then being exposed to better things. No, because they're going to think that they're not saying shit. They're going to be, like, like, be like, what are they even talking about? I feel like there's a chance that the girl you stumble upon at the TDE show might only listen to LA music. <laughs> Y'all forget the TDE. I mean, you you don't forget, but we didn't mention the TDE as SZA. And I think SZA is a big component. So does Jack Harlow's Festival. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Okay, well, we deviated from your hot take. <laughs> we deviated from the hot take. Miles, do you want to so go? Much. Um, okay, my hot take is Bryson Tiller is a top three R&B artist of our generation. No. Top, top five. three? It's top five. It's top five. I'll no. stand on top five. I, uh, no. I think Trap Soul is one of the most influential R&B albums in recent memory. Did Chris Brown die, bro? I didn't just because I let's say all the people that are better, uh, better than Bryson Tiller do that SZA Chris Breezy Summer Walker tell me when I'm wrong tell me when you disagree well we did we did three so what else, what else give me five on? I said top five I'll get, let me do top five okay and you're still fine um, Party Next Door mm. no yes. Party, Bryson's better than yes. Party no nah, Party's better Party's okay better. so now we're at four so oh, say if you can get one more in there he's wrong The Weeknd the weekend. I, I don't think the weekend's R and B. Oh my god! I think he's pop. What? Oh my god! I do pop and R and B. But just just bro, trilogy. Era. Trilogy is better than anything Bryson Tiller's ever released. I Tayana agree. Taylor. I agree. No, not Tayana. But I'll give you the weekend. I'll give you the weekend. Okay, so wrong. But not Tayana. But not Tayana. Take disputed. It's a hot take though. But it's wrong. You it's just you just but agree that you don't but even it's agree because he could be six. Um, give me another one. I'll say. I think Ari Lennox is better, bro. Oh my God. You're forgetting the excellence of Trap Yeah, Soul. I think that's crazy. You're forgetting the excellence. Okay, guys, guys, guys. Think about what You released Trap one good album. I like the album that Let came after that too. Exactly. Let me finish. Let me finish. Think about what Trap Soul did when it dropped. 
I know you were wearing a dad hat and a flannel, I'll say. No, I wasn't. I know you were. I knew a lot of people that were. I didn't partake. The influence of that album was crazy, both in the way that people was trying to dress <laughs> and in how R&B sounded at that time and a lot after. Brent Fiaz? No, no. What Brent is on par, like like on the on that track, but he's not he's not Bryson. You're gonna yet. take Bryson over. Brent? I'm taking Bryson over that. In ter- just you, in terms, you'd rather of- listen to Bryson over Brent Fires. I think that's really what it comes down to. I think I listen to them both a lot. No, but you have, you have to pick one. I'd probably one. say I'd probably say Bryson. Bryson has more songs for more moods. I got Brent. Bryson has ah. Oh, I don't has know. Way more way more projects that are better. Brent has Brent does have better projects. Bryson has really good songs. Bryson is really good. I don't know. That's why that was my hot take. Okay, it's wrong, but Alicia Keys. Take. It's not our generation. It's not our generation. She is a little old. <laughs> old woman. <laughs> crazy, crazy. You guys want mine? Yeah. Um, out of the entire underground mu- movement, BK the Ruler easily has the highest ceiling and will be the biggest star. You can just tell that like he's just on the album. Right now, um, and I think it's the best album that's come from that scene. Honestly, who else is underground? I'll, I'll put her with Ken Carson, Destroy Lonely, the whole next wave, the highways, the uh, autumn, summers. All I mean, that. she's definitely really good. She's yeah. I'm not any, of anyone you just named. I'm not mad at that all the way. I just um, can't. Rich Amiri. I like Wolfface Joey. I like Rich Amiri a lot. But see, when you go to Wolfface Joey, that's like, I think that's a whole different. That's like the sexy drill stuff. Is all the sexy drill stuff? Is it though? I think Wolfface he just started Joey, doing that yeah. because it's a wave. I think Wolfface Joey think is, is right music. in between those two worlds. I think all of Joey's music uh, now, the last two projects, is all sexy drill. That's music. what I'm saying because he was like, let me just change it up because it's working. I just feel like those are the people that he's been around. But I just and think the people who shit that. I mean, I just think you listen. You listen to the new BK album, and there are moments on there that seem like they're ready for a wider audience. And to me, that that lane of music, that's frequently the problem, is there's the cap and it's people that listen to this kind of music. But there are moments, like she obviously has this off-the-wall delivery, you know what I mean, that isn't like mainstream hip-hop. But there are a couple songs on there where she has a more traditional flow and I was like, oh, this could be like like the foil to Lotto, you know, for like women's hip-hop. You know what I mean? Like if you if you don't like Lotto and Cardi B, if you're more of like a Tia Corinne Rico Nasty fan, like BK could be... Like bigger than either of them in this world, really. To me, I think so. I'm not mad at that take. I'm. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't hate it. That's. A, I think that is a pretty hot take, though. You know. But I just can't. I feel like I'm missing someone. Like I'm not thinking of someone in that lane that's really big. Miles, um, why do you think? Why do you think that Drake won the Pusha T Drake beef? Oh, oh are my we bringing God. this terrible under? take? That's because that's way, a Miles. bad take. Why do I think that Drake won the Pusha T beef? I why do you that, think that? I mean, I just think that Pusha T was trying to go for a haymaker, and it created a moment. It did. I think a lot of people talked about it. I don't think it was as effective long-term as it should have been, and I think that the quality of song, like the actual listening experience, the longevity of his diss was just not there in comparison to so many other historically great disses. And I think Drake did drop a track, addressing what he needed to address, rapping, shit talking and it sounds better so i think just in the five to ten years after this beef when people don't even know about either of them as much as we do because we were in it they're gonna listen to those two tracks and be like i don't really think that this nigga push a debted him well Miles, well you want to get him <laughs> you want to get him? i don't know if i'm gonna get him but i do want to disagree with you on one point bro i think that push T had an impact he changed a child's life he changed Literally, young Adonis is. I'm life, not gonna man. lie, Adonis was not gonna get picked. <laughs> <laughs> Adonis, I am not gonna lie. We may not never know who Adonis was, and that's if Pusha didn't drop that that's track. That's what I'm saying. Like, yes, we can, and we had this conversation a little before, so I'm just adding on to points that we've already talked about. Yes, I can acknowledge that Drake's career, in terms of the numbers and his growth as an artist, like numbers wise, wasn't necessarily affected. But, bro, I feel like everything from the way that he presents Adonis now to even, like, the quality of music and what he's talking about is reflected in that disc, bro. I mean, Spencer, you know what? You take it away from here, because I don't want to talk to Miles anymore. Well, let's what? just get, the, let's <laughs> just get, get ran out of points. Let's get the facts straight. After 
the story of Adonis is dropped, there was no reply from Drake, correct? Mm-mm, I don't think so. To this day, no reply. So, so here's why it's wrong. What you're saying is like, like we watch, you know, a boxing match from mm-hmm. like 15 years ago, mm-hmm. and you know, fighter A throws like an incredible cross. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Great form, connects, boom, great fucking punch. And then fighter B ends up knocking fighter A out. You're like trying to say fighter A won the fight because damn that. That cross was form, like form. It was just by the book. It was a perfect cross. Great hit. You know what I'm saying? No. He got knocked out in real time. In real time, everybody watching the fight agreed, okay, fighter B won. You can't rewind and say, well, like, if you actually look at the way they were fighting, fighter A has a better stance. The, 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 the things I'm that he threw were better. I'm not saying in the moment he won. I'm just and saying that's the in most the important moment. Thing. I'm in saying- the moment is all that matters in rap beef. Who, who the c- consensus the the general population decides a winner in a rap beef, and that winner stands regardless if you go back ten years later and listen to the tracks. I don't think he won in the moment. I think he created a bigger moment, which is literally Drake's whole thing, bro. Pusha T took a moment. He took his like, and obviously it's you know what I'm saying. It's a shot, and it's gonna work. But he created a moment, bro. Like. I know you want to say that only he only talked about uh, Adonis in it, but he talks about several things about Drake. He said he's better than Drake. He said that Drake's dad didn't love his mom and doesn't love him. Mm-hmm. He said he's not even black. Bro, he said so much shit that was not just the baby. The baby was a headline, and he knew it was a knockout exactly. punch. And Drake had a lot of knockout but punches. But I'm saying too. that Pusha T just, did Drake better than Drake does Drake. Drake lives to create those moments the only on the internet. The thing that he did was the baby thing, and the baby thing is a great shot. But other than that, the bars that they traded at each other were equivalent. Drake, this whole nigga's career is built on being a coke rapper, and Drake is like, "This shit is fake. All you did was push a little bit of weed for your brother, for your brother who was the fucking kingpin. Like, you're not about none of the shit that you're talking about. Literally, your whole thing is fabricated, bro. But your your whole point them. doesn't make any sense, bro. Nobody Drake, believe, Drake, you don't believe that? Drake, Drake waved the white flag. Bro. People have talked about it since, bro. Drake waved the white flag, bro. The he took a picture did, with Kanye, bro. What is that about waving? That's the white fucking flag? embarrassing, bro. He's literally talked about the Kanye thing Bro, so and, many times. And you since. know, you know what's you know what's funny too. The whole beef was was, was with Kanye initially. Yeah, and then it became about Pusha T. The only reason and he has not said shots to Pusha T. James he has not said shots Prince, to Pusha T since. And he took the picture with Kanye. He did the concert with Kanye against his own. He world, literally bro. said that Jay Prince was the reason he took the picture with Kanye. He waved the white flag. Is that not waving the white flag? No, it's not. He did, bro. What, what are you talking about? Jay Prince is the guy that's protecting. Allegedly, yeah, all the, peace, of the peacemaker. So he's like, I'm gonna talk to him. I'll peace up for Jay Prince, but that's still an op. And Drake is like, Yeah, I'm gonna wave my white flag and give up this battle. I don't think he gave up. I think he said, I'm gonna go get this money with Kanye. Because Push and him still have had no. I don't think there's any reconciliation, and I think niggas ain't really checking for. And this is, I don't want to come off as a Pusha T hater because I really like Pusha T, and I feel y'all on the fact that like it was a it was a hard hard thing to overcome. The baby thing was not nothing. I just don't think the the track sounded that great. And from a musical perspective, that's literally, I think, all I'm basing it on. Bro, in in battle rap, though... I think the shots were equal. I think the shots were equal, and the kid shit doesn't hit as hard five years later because it's like, all right, he's raising his kid. It's fine. Whatever. He had a kid. How many niggas have kids they're not even claiming? Nobody like, cares that's not, what it feels like 10 years later. It's all about the moment. We're, gonna, we're still talking about it how many years later? We're talking about the moment. It's going to be we're conversation. Not talking about, we're, we're talking about the moment. <laughs> why do you feel like he he won, bro? Like, why do you feel like Drake won? Miles sounds like he has a hidden kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he sounds like to me. Like, I just don't under like I don't understand the don't perspective put that on my body, bro. <laughs> at all. I think you got a little baby. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I just think that I, Drake had a better track. Honestly, and just when I think back to it, that's the main thing that sticks in my head. And but I just the only the only thing that matters is the court of public opinion, and everyone decided that Pusha T won. Yep. Who is everyone? What's your barometer for everyone? What's that's your, your barometer favorite for, thing? What's your exactly. barometer for women? Exactly. It's a hard question to answer. Mom, huh? You always like to it's say a hard that question shit. To answer. You always say that uh, shit. Everybody, have... everybody. You go on Twitter and yeah. see three tweets, and you say, "Oh, everybody thinks this." Yeah. I'm saying I do it, and y'all call me out for it. I just did the same. My barometer. I'm my, not gonna stop doing that. My my barometer is that Drake still to this day hasn't responded to Pusha T. He won the battle. He did not release not one verse calling Pusha T out. Pusha T. He did says release Drake. a verse calling Pusha T out. Pusha T. W freestyle. Drake, <laughs> before he released Story of Adidon or whatever the fuck this shit's <laughs> called, bro. Adidon. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. Yeah, I'm wrapped. 
niggas is just talking. Got anything else to say, buddy? Um, buddy, that's crazy. <laughs> that was an aggressive buddy. Anything else that, to say, well, bro? That, no, we have to end it on a positive note. Let me let me pick a song I want to put the people on to, guys. If you didn't already listen to what's your favorite song off the Beyonce? Listen to Two Hands to Heaven on the Beyonce album. Great song. Two Hands to Heaven is great. Appreciate y'all, man. Thank you for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Yerk. Catch y'all on the next one, man. Peace.